it was because of angels that I first learned to knit. A group in the parish where I was working had the idea of knitting hundreds of angels in a month when Easter, Eid, Vaisakhi and other religious festivals were all being celebrated in our local community. The plan was to leave the angels in places where people could pick them up, spreading messages of blessing and peace and hope at a time when differences were threatening to divide us. I was keen to support their efforts, but if I was to join in, I would first have to learn to knit. So, with a huge amount of patience, the group took me under their wing. It wasn't easy. I barely knew one end of a knitting needle from the other. But eventually they taught me enough to knit a simple angel. My first one was a bit wonky and have had a few drop stitches, but over time they began to look more angelic. Angels play a big part in the Christmas story. They appear to Mary, to Joseph, to the shepherds, and to Zechariah, the father of Jesus' cousin, John the Baptist. However, unlike my feeble knitted versions, angels in the Bible sound pretty scary. The first thing they say is usually, do not be afraid. Their appearance is unsettling and disruptive, but they also bring with them messages of blessing and peace and hope. Like the angels, Christmas itself can be a disruptive blessing. In a bitterly divided world, the birth of Jesus, the Prince of Peace, changes everything. If I'm to take to heart the blessing of the angels this Christmas, I might need to change and learn to do new things too. As I do, I'm always thankful for the patience of those who take me under their wing, even if I do still drop a stitch or two every now and then.